Ancient Greek, Wikipedia article audio. The ancient Greek language includes the forms of Greek used in ancient Greece and the ancient world from around the 9th century BC to the 6th century AD. It is often roughly divided into the Archaic Period, Classical Period, and Hellenistic Period. It is antedated in the 2nd millennium BC by Mycenaean Greek and succeeded by Medieval Greek. The language of the Hellenistic phase is known as Koine. Koine is regarded as a separate historical stage of its own, although in its earliest form it closely resembled Attic Greek and in its latest form it approaches Medieval Greek. Prior to the Koine period, Greek of the Classic and earlier periods included several regional dialects. Dialects History Ancient Greek was the language of Homer and of 5th century Athenian historians, playwrights, and philosophers. It has contributed many words to English vocabulary and has been a standard subject of study in educational institutions of the Western world since the Renaissance. This article primarily contains information about the epic and classical phases of the language. Ancient Greek was a pluricentric language, divided into many dialects. The main dialect groups are Attic and Ionic, Aeolic, Arcado-Cypriot, and Doric, many of them with several subdivisions. Some dialects are found in standardized literary forms used in literature while others are attested only in inscriptions. There are also several historical forms. Homeric Greek is a literary form of Archaic Greek used in the epic poems, the Iliad and Odyssey, and in later poems by other authors. Homeric Greek had significant differences in grammar and pronunciation from classical Attic and other classical era dialects. The origins, early form, and development of the Hellenic language family are not well understood because of a lack of contemporaneous evidence. Several theories exist about what Hellenic dialect groups may have existed between the divergence of early Greek-like speech from the common Proto-Indo-European language and the Classical period. They have the same general outline, but differ in some of the detail. The only attested dialect from this period is Mycenaean Greek, but its relationship to the historical dialects and the historical circumstances of the times imply that the overall groups already existed in some form. Scholars assume that major ancient Greek period dialect groups developed not later than 1120 BC at the time of the Dorian invasion a euro and that their first appearances as precise alphabetic writing began in the 8th century BC. The invasion would not be Dorian unless the invaders had some cultural relationship to the historical Dorians. The invasion is known to have displaced population to the later Attic Ionic regions who regarded themselves as descendants of the population displaced by or contending with the Dorians. Related Languages or Dialects The Greeks of this period believed there were three major divisions of all Greek people Ea Eurodorians, Aeolians, and Ionians, each with their own defining and distinctive dialects. Allowing for their oversight of Arcadian, an obscure mountain dialect, and Cypriot, far from the center of Greek scholarship. This division of people and language is quite similar to the results of modern archaeological linguistic investigation. One standard formulation for the dialects is Phonology West versus non-West Greek is the strongest marked and earliest division, with non-West in subsets of Ionic Attic and Aeolic vs. Arcado-Cypriot, or Aeolic, and Arcado-Cypriot vs. Ionic Attic. Often non-West is called East Greek. Arcado-Cypriot apparently descended more closely from the Mycenaean Greek of the Bronze Age. 
Boeotian had come under a strong northwest Greek influence, and can in some respects be considered a transitional dialect. Thessalian likewise had come under northwest Greek influence, though to a lesser degree. Differences from Proto-Indo-European Pamphylian Greek, spoken in a small area on the southwestern coast of Anatolia and little preserved in inscriptions, may be either a fifth major dialect group, or it is Mycenaean Greek overlaid by Doric, with a non-Greek native influence. Phonemic Inventory Most of the dialect subgroups listed above had further subdivisions, generally equivalent to a city-state and its surrounding territory, or to an island. Doric notably had several intermediate divisions as well, into Island Doric, Southern Peloponnesus Doric, and Northern Peloponnesus Doric. Consonants The lesbian dialect was Aeolic Greek. All the groups were represented by colonies beyond Greece proper as well, and these colonies generally developed local characteristics, often under the influence of settlers or neighbors speaking different Greek dialects. Vowels The dialects outside the Ionic group are known mainly from inscriptions, notable exceptions being after the conquests of Alexander the Great in the late 4th century BC, a new international dialect known as Koine or Common Greek developed, largely based on Attic Greek, but with influence from other dialects. This dialect slowly replaced most of the older dialects, although Doric dialect has survived in the Tsikonian language, which is spoken in the region of modern Sparta. Doric has also passed down its aorist terminations into most verbs of Demotic Greek. By about the 6th century AD, the Koine had slowly metamorphosized into Medieval Greek. Ancient Macedonian was an Indo-European language closely related to Greek, but its exact relationship is unclear because of insufficient data, possibly a dialect of Greek a sibling language to Greek, or a close cousin to Greek, and perhaps related to some extent to Thracian and Phrygian languages. The Macedonian dialect appears to have been supplanted by Attic Greek in the Hellenistic period. Ancient Greek differs from Proto-Indo-European and other Indo-European languages in certain ways. In phonotactics, Ancient Greek words could end only in a vowel or slash nsr slash, final stops were lost, as in I superscript 3 iii plus or minus milk, compared with I superscript 3 iii plus or minus I degree iii of milk. Ancient Greek of the classical period also differed in phonemic inventory. The pronunciation of ancient Greek was very different from that of modern Greek. Ancient Greek had long and short vowels, many diphthongs, double and single consonants, voiced, voiceless, and aspirated stops, and a pitch accent. In modern Greek, all vowels and consonants are short. Many vowels and diphthongs once pronounced distinctly are pronounced as slash i slash. Some of the stops and glides in diphthongs have become fricatives and the pitch accent has changed to a stress accent. Many of the changes took place in the Koine Greek period. The writing system of modern Greek, however, does not reflect all pronunciation changes. Morphology The examples below represent Attic Greek in the 5th century BC. Ancient pronunciation cannot be reconstructed with certainty but Greek from the period is well documented, and there is little disagreement among linguists as to the general nature of the sounds that the letters represent. Augment Occurred as an allophone of slash n slash that was used before velars and as an allophone of slash e slash before nasals. Slash r slash was probably voiceless when word initial. 
slash s slash was assimilated to before voiced consonants. Fragments of the works of the poet Sappho from the island of Lesbos, in Aeolian, and, the poems of the Boeotian poet Pindar and other lyric poets, usually in Doric. Slash OE slash raised to, probably by the 4th century BC. Greek, like all of the older Indo-European languages, is highly inflected. It is highly archaic in its preservation of Proto-Indo-European forms. In ancient Greek, nouns have five cases, three genders, and three numbers. Verbs have four moods and three voices, as well as three persons and various other forms. Verbs are conjugated through seven combinations of tenses and aspect, the present, future, and imperfect are imperfective in aspect, the aorist, a present perfect, pluperfect and future perfect. Most tenses display all four moods and three voices, although there is no future subjunctive or imperative. Also, there is no imperfect subjunctive, optative or imperative. The infinitives and participles correspond to the finite combinations of tense, aspect, and voice. Pi asterisk s became slash h slash at the beginning of a word, Latin sex, English 6, ancient Greek a 1 fourth i 3 fourth slash ha copyright ks slash dot, pi asterisk s was elided between vowels after an intermediate step of debacalization, Sanskrit genesis, Latin generis. Greek asterisk genesos asterisk genehos ancient Greek I superscript 3 I I 1 half I I I, Attic I superscript 3 I I 1 half I I, I of a kind dot, pi asterisk Y slash J slash became slash H slash or slash Z slash, Sanskrit yas, ancient Greek A 1 half, I slash ha superscript 3 S slash who, Latin I ho gum, English yoke, Ancient Greek I I, I superscript 3 I O E I slash Ziga superscript 3 S slash dot, pi asterisk W, which occurred in Mycenaean and some non Attic dialects, was lost. Early Doric I I I I superscript 3 I I 1 half slash W A copyright Ragon slash, English work. Attic Greek A 1 fourth I I superscript 3 I I 1 half slash A copyright Ragon slash dot, Pi and Mycenaean labia ovelars changed to plain stops in the later Greek dialects, for instance, Pi asterisk K became slash P slash or slash T slash in Attic, Attic Greek I Euro I A slash Pa E slash where, Latin qua, Attic Greek I I I slash Ta S slash, Latin keys who, dot, pi. Voiced aspirated stops asterisk b degree to degree c e degree g e degree g e e degree were devoiced and became the aspirated stops i i i slash p e degree t e degree k degree slash in ancient Greek. The indicative of past tenses adds a prefix slash e slash, called the augment. This was probably originally a separate word meaning something like then, added because tenses in pi had primarily aspectual meaning. The augment is added to the indicative of the aorist, imperfect, and pluperfect, but not to any of the other forms of the aorist. Reduplication Writing System Sample Texts Modern Use the two kinds of augment in Greek are syllabic and quantitative. The syllabic augment is added to stems beginning with consonants, and simply prefixes e. The quantitative augment is added to stems beginning with vowels, and involves lengthening the vowel. a, a, e, a, 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 i, a, 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 o, a, 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 u, a A A A I A A I E I A A I or E I O A A I O A A U or O 
EUAAU or EU, OUAOU. -O -U. Some verbs augment irregularly, the most common variation is EAEI. The irregularity can be explained diachronically by the loss of S between vowels. In verbs with a prefix, the augment is placed not at the start of the word, but between the prefix and the original verb. For example, I euro I I superscript to I I I I per thousand goes to I euro I I I I superscript to I plus or minus I O I one half in the aorist. Following Homer's practice, the augment is sometimes not made in poetry, especially epic poetry. The augment sometimes substitutes for reduplication. See below. Syllabic reduplication. Most verbs beginning with a single consonant, or a cluster of a stop with a sonorant, add a syllable consisting of the initial consonant followed by e. An aspirated consonant, however, reduplicates in its unas pirated equivalent, Grassman's law, augment, verbs beginning with a vowel, as well as those beginning with a cluster other than those indicated previously reduplicate in the same fashion as the augment. This remains in all forms of the perfect, not just the indicative, attic reduplication, some verbs beginning with an A, E or O, followed by a sonorant, reduplicate by adding a syllable consisting of the initial vowel and following consonant, and lengthening the following vowel. Hence E R A R A R, an A N A N, O L A O L A, L, E D A E D A D. This is not actually specific to Attic Greek, despite its name, but it was generalized in Attic. This originally involved reduplicating a cluster consisting of a laryngeal and sonorant, hence Ha L A Holly L A O L A. L with normal Greek development of laryngeals. Almost all forms of the perfect, pluperfect, and future perfect reduplicate the initial syllable of the verb stem. The three types of reduplication are Irregular duplication can be understood diachronically. For example, lambana has the perfect stem ila fa because it was originally slambana. With perfect ses la fa, becoming e la fa through compensatory lengthening. Reduplication is also visible in the present tense stems of certain verbs. These stems add a syllable consisting of the root's initial consonant followed by i. A nasal stop appears after the reduplication in some verbs. Ancient Greek was firstly written in linear b but afterwards it was written in the Greek alphabet, with some variation among dialects. Early texts are written in Bustrophedon style, but left to right became standard during the Classic period. Modern editions of ancient Greek texts are usually written with accents and breathing marks, interword spacing, modern punctuation, and sometimes mixed case, but they all were introduced later. The beginning of Homer's Iliad exemplifies the archaic period of ancient Greek. Ioea I one half I superscript one I one half A one fourth I I superscript one I I I I I I I I I I I I per thousand A one fourth I I superscript one I A I I I A one half I I I one fourth I I one half I I one half A one fourth pound I one fourth I I I A Euro trademark A one fourth I I plus or minus I superscript one I A I A one fourth I I superscript three I A Euro trademark A one fourth I I I degree I I Euro I I I A one half degree I I A Euro trademark A one fourth degree I I I I one fourth I I I I I I A one half degree I A one fourth I superscript one I Euro I I I I plus or minus I I I one half a one fourth I per thousand I one half I plus or minus A one half I I A one half degree I I A one half superscript two A one fourth I I superscript one I plus or minus I I A I I I degree I I one half I superscript one I one half 
IA 1 fourth degree I per thousand I 1 half I A I I I Euro A 3 fourth superscript 1 A I I superscript 1 A 1 half I I A Euro trademark A 1 fourth I I I I I I I I I superscript 2 I I I I registered trademark A A 1 fourth I 3 fourth I A 1 half I A 1 half I A 1 half degree I Euro I A I I plus or minus I I superscript 1 I plus or minus I registered trademark I I I 1 half A 1 fourth I I plus or minus I 1 half I I A 1 fourth I I I I I I I I I A 1 fourth I 1 half I plus or minus I 3 fourth A 1 fourth Euro I 1 half I I A I 1 half I degree I plus or minus A 1 half I A I I A 1 fourth I I superscript 1 I I I I I The beginning of Apology by Plato exemplifies Attic Greek from the Classical period of Ancient Greek. Using the IPA Transliterated into the Latin alphabet using a modern version of the Erasmian scheme. Translated into English. The study of ancient Greek in European countries in addition to Latin occupied an important place in the syllabus from the Renaissance until the beginning of the 20th century. Ancient Greek is still taught as a compulsory or optional subject especially at traditional or elite schools throughout Europe such as public schools and grammar schools in the United Kingdom. It is compulsory in the Lyso Classico in Italy, in the gymnasium in the Netherlands, in some classes in Austria, in Croatia in Klesia. N.A. Gymnotica, in classical studies in Asso in Belgium and it is optional in the Humanistisches Gymnasium in Germany. In 2006-07, 15,000 pupils studied ancient Greek in Germany according to the Federal Statistical Office of Germany, and 280,000 pupils studied it in Italy. It is a compulsory subject alongside Latin in the humanities branch of Spanish Baccalaureato. Ancient Greek is also taught at most major universities worldwide, often combined with Latin as part of classics. It will also be taught in state primary schools in the UK, to boost children a Euro trademark S language skills, and will be offered as a foreign language to pupils in all primary schools from 2014 as part of a major drive to boost education standards, together with Latin, Mandarin, French, German, Spanish, and Italian. Ancient Greek is also taught as a compulsory subject in all gymnasiums and lyceums in Greece. Grammar Learning Modern authors rarely write in Ancient Greek, though Jan Ka trademark E. Sadlo wrote some poetry and prose in the language, and Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and some volumes of Asterix have been translated into Ancient Greek. A one half I one half I O E I one fourth I plus or minus I I plus or minus key I I superscript one I plus or minus one fourth I I one half I plus or minus is the first magazine of crosswords and puzzles in ancient Greek. Its first issue appeared in April 2015 as an annex to Hebdomada Enigmatum. Alfred Rolfs included a preface, a short history of the Septuagint text and other front matter translated into ancient Greek in his 1935 edition of the Septuagint, Robert Hanhart also included the introductory remarks to the 2006 revised Rolf Euro Hanhart edition in the language as well. Ancient Greek is also used by organizations and individuals, mainly Greek, who wish to denote their respect, admiration, or preference for the use of this language. This use is sometimes considered graphical, nationalistic, or funny. In any case, the fact that modern Greeks can still wholly or partly understand texts written in non-archaic forms of ancient Greek shows the affinity of modern Greek language to its ancestral predecessor. An isolated community near Trabzon, Turkey, an area where Pontic Greek is spoken, has been found to speak a variety of Greek that has parallels, 
both structurally and in its vocabulary, to ancient Greek not present in other varieties. As few as 5,000 people speak the dialect but linguists believe that it is the closest living language to ancient Greek. Ancient Greek is often used in the coinage of modern technical terms in the European languages, see English words of Greek origin. Latinized forms of ancient Greek roots are used in many of the scientific names of species and in scientific terminology. Proto-Greek Mycenaean Ancient Koine Medieval Modern Classical texts <laughs>